The SES Fit for Task project is a project that is designed to improve the health and well-being of SES volunteers around Australia. And it does this by introducing a series of physical screening measures, which are designed to introduce functional and operational assessments based on the functional and operational demands of tasks. Importantly, these assessments represent minimum physical standards. This project was a national joint collaboration between Human Performance Science as the research provider, all of the SES agencies, AFAC, the Bushfire and Natural Hazards CRC, and the volunteer associations. It was a four-year research project, which was inclusive of gold standard scientific research practices. And in this time, we were fortunate enough to profile all of the range of SES skill sets, right down from general rescue type activities, all the way through to the more advanced activities such as swift water rescue or alpine search and rescue. The SES Fit for Task research process was broadly divided into two key research phases. The first phase was about uh, understanding the physical tasks and the physical demands associated with those tasks. And the second phase was about developing the physical screening measures that were reflective of those tasks um, that were identified in, in the first phase. More specifically, the entire research process included four key components, um, and each of these four components uh, aimed at gathering information and then using that information for the, the subsequent um, component afterwards. So the first component of the research uh, was the subjective task analysis. Now, the subjective task analysis was about understanding the physical tasks from the point of view of the, uh, the volunteers. So this involved... Uh, conducting focus groups with the volunteers and subject matter experts and then sending out surveys for uh, the wider volunteer um, community um, to answer questions uh, on what they thought the, the most physical, physically demanding tasks were or what the physical demands associated with those tasks were. The subjective job task analysis information was then analysed and then fed into the second key research component, which was the objective job task analysis. So the objective job task analysis is where the research team get out into the field and they physically measure the volunteers uh, performing those, those key tasks that were identified uh, in the subjective job task analysis. So these measures included uh, heart rate data, uh, GPS data, which was uh, movement data, so how far would the volunteers typically work uh, when they're conducting um, a job, or how fast did they move? Uh, there was also force data, so we could understand the, the push or pull or drag forces of, of items um, when volunteers were conducting those types of assessments. And we also weighed the items, the, the tools, the implements that, that the volunteers used in, in typical uh, rescue scenarios. The third phase of the research project was about then designing and developing these, uh, these assessments. Um, so it was about taking those key tasks from the first uh, two components, from the subjective job task analysis and the objective job task analysis, and then using those key tasks to um, develop assessments that replicated the movements of those key tasks. Uh, and this is where the, the new assessments were born, okay, in this third component. The very final component of the research process was the implementation phase. Um, and this phase was really about us working with uh, SES, the, the entire organisation, to determine how we were going to take these new uh, fit for task assessments and integrate them into the SES uh, workforce. One of the key aims of the project was to deliver practical assessments that were going to be feasible for jurisdictions all around the country to be able to implement and facilitate. We did this uh, via many conversations throughout the process with SMEs uh, and also through the project working group. By verification steps placed purposefully along the way, I think we were able to bridge the gap between research and application. We delivered nine physical assessments, seven land-based and two based in a swimming pool. These are all inclusive of functional movement patterns uh, and energy systems that we saw in the most common and physically demanding uh, SES tasks uh, performed in the qualification skill sets uh, that we observed. 
as much as practical, we've also tried to include as, as many as the, uh, the usual, the common equipment that, that's also used during these taskings uh, to increase uh, the, the validity and the feel of the assessments. You'll also notice that the vast majority of these assessments have graduated performance standards. All right, so this means there's an easy and a harder version of assessments. This was due to the appreciation that we got that there are a lot of common movement patterns throughout a lot of these tasks in the different qualifications that we saw. And we needed to appreciate this in the final product that we handed over. An example of this is the hike. So we saw hike or moving over ground in several of, of the qualification types. So we saw it in, in rugged search, in alpine. We saw it in urban search and rescue. Right, they're just done to a, a diff, for a different duration at, and at vastly different intensities. So it was important that we're able to appreciate that and include that in the program. You'll also note the, all the assessments are linked to specific qualifications or skill set types through there. A nicety with what we've developed and delivered is that uh, a volunteer only needs to do an assessment type once, regardless of that, if that assessment is linked to several of the qualifications that they hold. One of the most important things to note with the SES Fit for Task program is that it's built on the principle of inclusivity, meaning if a volunteer cannot meet one or more of the assessments, then he or she would not be excluded or removed from the volunteer workforce. If this were to be the case and they could not meet one of these performance standards, then additional opportunities will be afforded to them. This could be in the form of repeated assessments over a period of time, or it could be with resources around physical training or physical conditioning. If the program is implemented properly, the assessment should help organisation to get the most out of their volunteers, while simultaneously ensuring the volunteers and the general public are safeguarded against injury or harm.